Well, hello, welcome to the video. This one's about the Beatles. Have you heard them? If not, ask your dad. I'm gonna tell you more than 10 things you probably didn't know about the Beatles, because I have delved deep. And the first thing you probably didn't know is where the name came about. Well, back in 1959, Buddy Holly. Well, that'll be the day died in a plane crash and John Lennon was very keen on him and his music and he wanted to pay tribute and Buddy Holly's band was called the Crickets. So John Lennon decided that a play on the words beat, you know, like in a beat group, would be the Beatles and it was the Silver Beatles first and then obviously that was changed to the Beatles. Secondly, did you know that EMI, who eventually signed them to the Parlophone record label, weren't the first people that Brian Epstein went to. He was turned down by Decca Records a few weeks earlier, who said that guitar groups are on the way out. So, that's how much they knew. Thirdly... <laughs> their producer and A&R man, the man who signed them, was a man called George Martin, often referred to as the fifth Beatle, but there again, so were quite a lot of other people. Now, he actually played keyboards on many of the Beatles tracks. Did you know that? And did you know that George Martin was taught to play the oboe when he was a young man by Jane Asher's mother? Now, Jane Asher, if you didn't know, was a girlfriend of Paul McCartney, and she sang backing vocals on Let It Be, or was it Hey Jude? One of those, maybe both, who knows? And now another amazing fact, but first of all, if you like this, please like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and comment, let me know what you think. Now what's the next fact? The two surviving members of the Beatles, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, they're both vegetarians. But did you know that Ringo Starr is allergic to onions and garlic, which must make his vegetarianism a little bit harder than it ought to be? Another thing you might not know is that George was the guitarist, Ringo was the drummer, Paul was the bassist, and John played rhythm, and various other things, and they all sang at various times. But did you know that they were also multi-instrumentalists? They played out of their main instrument. For example, on back in the USSR, Paul actually played drums on that because Ringo stormed out temporarily, saying he was leaving the band. On the ballad of John and Yoko, John and Paul play all the instruments because both George and Ringo were out of the country when it was recorded. Mm. On the other hand, the only track in which only one Beatle plays is actually Yesterday, because that's just Paul McCartney on acoustic guitar and vocals backed by a string quartet. Every other Beatles track had at least two or more Beatles playing on it. I wonder if you realise that famous as they are, at the time, in the 1960s, the BBC refused to play quite a few Beatles songs on the radio. These included I Am The Walrus, Come Together, Lucy In The Sky With Diamonds and A Day In The Life. Don't ask me why, it actually is mainly to do with what they thought was drug references, which in most cases weren't actually drug references. Everybody's got something to hide except me and my monkey from the White Album. Everybody's got something to hide except me and my monkey. Get up! I'm Get up! It's the longest title of any Beatles track. And finally. And finally. And finally. And finally. And finally. And finally, very sadly, the pine tree planted to commemorate George Harrison when he died. It was planted in a Los Angeles park and unfortunately died 10 years later. It was killed by beetles. I'm not gonna say a word. Well, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, and um, I hope to see you next time. Next time we might be talking about pub rock or anything to do with music and that era. So um, keep watching. Thank you very much. Goodbye.